So remember earlier in the uh, interview, Pope Francis was talking about the three, the quote, three rules of Vincent of Lorin. Well, I want to read to you uh, from the writings of St. Vincent Lorin from the Comonatorium, what exactly he wrote. And it actually contradicts Francis' yes. <laughs> entire position of the evolution of dogma, essentially what we're talking about, the, key, the keystone of, of modernism that a dogma can change from one meaning into something different and allow things that used to be forbidden. So this is what uh, St. Vincent actually wrote. He says, quote, I have often then inquired earnestly and attentively of very many men eminent for sanctity and learning, how and by what sure and so to speak universal rule I may be able to distinguish the truth of Catholic faith from the falsehood of heretical depravity. And I have always and in almost every instance received an answer to this effect, that whether I or anyone else should wish to detect the frauds and avoid the snares of heretics as they rise and to continue sound and complete in the Catholic faith, we must, the Lord helping, fortify our own belief in two ways. First, by the authority of the divine law and then by the tradition of the Catholic Church. St. Vincent goes on to say, what if some novel contagion seeks to infect not merely an insignificant portion of the church, but the whole? Sounds familiar. Uh, then it will be his care to cleave to antiquity, which at this, uh, at this day cannot possibly be seduced by any fraud of novelty. Very important for something Francis says later on in this interview. And then finally, uh, St. Vincent of Lorin says, and we get to the part where Francis was basically paraphrasing, but someone will say, perhaps, shall there then be no progress in Christ's church? In other words, no deepening of understanding, such like that. And St. Vincent of Lorin answers the rhetorical question, certainly all possible progress, yet on condition that it be real progress, not alteration of the faith. For progress requires that the subject be enlarged in itself, alteration that it be transformed into something else. The intelligence then, the knowledge, the wisdom, as well of individuals as of all, as well of one man as of the whole church, ought in the course of ages and centuries to increase and make much and vigorous progress. So in other words, the understanding, the depth of uh, mm -hmm. understanding of individuals but the actual object of our faith doesn't change. It's kind of like the focusing of a camera lens. Things become sharper uh -huh. as you focus the lens. But he says, yet only in its own kind. And this next phrase is very important. That is to say, in the same doctrine, in the same sense, and in the same, same meaning. meaning. And this last portion was actually quoted by Vatican I in the dogmatic constitution Dei Filius on the Catholic faith, chapter four. So that's been in, incorporated right. into a dogmatic text. And he goes on, so I don't know, Brian had something he wanted to uh, add. And again, it's it's a total misuse of Vincent of Laren to say he supports what's essentially a modernist position because in the modernist, you have to remember the idea, and John Ryle, Dr. John Ryle is excellent on this if you've heard his lectures. One of the key elements of modernism is this idea of vitality, that yes. for something to be alive, it has to always be changing. It has to be different. And if it's not changing and different, it's dead. Right. And so that's why these two quotes, what Matt read earlier about traditionalists and about this misuse of Vincent of Laron's are, are really epitomize. They really epitomize modernism, that for the modernists, if you believe the same thing in the same sense, in the same meaning, you're dead. That, that's just death. You have to always have something new, something different, as opposed to you always believe in the same sense, same meaning, but it's more widely understood. The reasons for it are great, greater. Its application to more contexts are greater. That, that's the sense uh, of living, living that the principle that ever changes is alive today and we're using it. So we're not ignoring it. So in the traditional sense, we'd be dead. We say, oh yeah, we accept contradic contraception's wrong. Let's do it anyway. Then we're dead. We're dead members because, you know, right. we we know we have to be alive by living according to those principles. But for the modernists, the principles themselves have to be have to be changing, and that that's why 
you know, he says traditionals are dead. And look, he's not this. He's a very smart man. Right. He he plays this card. Pope Francis, you know, sometimes of, you know, oh, oh, yeah, I don't realize. But he is very smart, very well educated. He's choosing Vincent of Laren for a reason, because he knows mm -hmm. traditionalists quote what Matt just read all the time to yes. have the church, you know, the, the modernists be condemned by the words of the church. And he's therefore saying, oh, look, I, I'm proving my point by choosing your person, Vincent of Laren by twisting yes. his words, essentially. Exactly. Yes. So here we get to the, the crux of the interview in this answer, which was supposed to be about yes. contraception, what, but ended up being a rant against traditionalists. He says, quote, I think this is very clear. A church that does not develop its thinking in an ecclesial sense is a church <laughs> that is going backward. This is today's problem and a traditional no, no, they are not traditional, Pope Francis says. They are people looking to the past, going backward, without roots. Well, that's nonsensical. If you're going backwards, <laughs> right, you're going right. backwards you are going to your roots. <laughs> right, right, right. But remember what St. Vincent of Lorraine said. That Antiquity. If, uh, yes, exactly. If some novel contagion seeks to infect the church, then we must, quote, cleave to antiquity. That's what the saint actually wrote. Francis goes on, uh, you know, and he says, and looking backward is a sin, he claims, <laughs> yeah. because it does not progress with the church, maybe not with certain church men, <laughs> but it's, yeah, looking backward is obviously not a sin. Tradition, he says, instead, uh, someone said, tradition is the living faith of those who have died. For those people who are looking backward, who call themselves traditionalists, it is the dead faith of the living, end quote. Now, this marks an important shift because, again, the, the progressives for 50 years, right, what they recognized, okay, you are traditionalists, you are doing this, you are traditionalists, and you're just, you missed the boat. You need to get, you need to get on board with us and change. He's taking this to a whole new level. They're saying, oh, you're not even traditionalist, you traditionalists. Right. I mean, it, it's, it's, that's what's really absurd about it. He's not just saying, yeah, you are, but we disagree with you. He's even trying to say, you're not even traditionalists. Uh, right. In this sort of bizarre way, the traditionalists are people that don't look back to tradition. What? what? <laughs> and I think the root problem here with his understanding is his, his misunderstanding of the nature of tradition itself. 